It's PLZ at the Euros. I'm Peter Martin, live from Munich. All this week on YouTube, you can join us. If you've got the time and you want to support Scotland, then why not join Hugh McDonald, Tam McManus and myself, taking you through not only the build-up to the big match Germany against Scotland, but we're also looking forward to Scotland against Switzerland and Scotland against Hungary. Yes, 10 days where PLZ Soccer is going to be across all the social media channels. We'll be on Twitter, we'll be on YouTube, we'll be on Facebook, and we'll be keeping you right up to date with the Tartan Army and all the big news coming out of that Scotland camp. And uh, I can tell you that Steve Clark and Andy Robertson have been chatting to you in the last uh, few hours talking about the big game Germany-Scotland which can't come quick enough now we're all looking forward to it I think it can't come quick enough for the both of them as well they'll have done all the talking I mean it's a I mean it's, it's, it'll be a chore for them it's one of the things they've got to do they've got to do the press and they'll want the game to be on them uh, because it's been an awful long build up I would take the build up into the challenge matches as well so it's been a long time coming and everybody really just wants to get it on now yeah absolutely the Tartan army and uh, of course there's so many different figures that you get on how many people are coming over to this one, um, but everybody's looking for a ticket, and you can't all get a ticket, Hugh, because some have been speculating that there's about 200,000 Scots. In fact, I'm almost certain the only two people left in Scotland is our reporter, Kerry Pollock's mum and dad, um, because everybody else seems to be going. Well, everybody else was in front of me at security this morning at Glasgow Airport. That's for, that's for, that's for uh, sure. Yeah, tens of thousands coming. We've chosen the only quiet spot in Munich <laughs> because Munich today, Munich Airport today and coming out uh, to the, the hotel just full of tens of thousands of fans. Tam's getting his Seville calculator out <laughs> to, get, uh, to uh, do the, the proper, uh, proper talk and it's absolutely terrific because what it is is we've got for the first time in a generation we've got a Scotland team in a championship, we know we had COVID, we had Scotland in the COVID championship, but now this is an accessible championship, and it's. I just think that I just think the atmosphere is just incredible at the moment. Yeah, plane after plane, some people walking, mm -hmm. uh, some people actually getting their car all decorated as well. There are so many brilliant stories of. Uh, Scotland fans just desperate time to be there that's the thing we just love being involved in these tournaments I mean I can remember as a young guy you know with all my mates we wanted to go and follow Scotland wherever they were playing yeah and, and, and if you hit the nail on the head there about generational I think the, the opening game of, of the World Cup 98 mm. you know I remember I was 17 years old really? and, but for that a couple of years ago the Euros that was the last time I'd seen Scotland mm. in, a, mm. in a major tournament you know so that as a generation and People are trying to get here by whatever means. A few of my, my friends, I've got a camper van, four of them. Uh, they, get the, they drove it down to, to Dover and get the, the boat over and then drove to Germany. So and they get lots of people doing that as well. The plane, the plane this morning was, was buzzing. You know, you can see the excitement in people. I think there's a lot of pessimism about the group we're in. I think we're, I think we're up against it. But if we can give a good account of ourselves tomorrow night, you know, any sort of result would be a great result. You know, a win or a, a draw is a massive result. A narrow defeat keeps you in it. What you don't want to do is take a heavy defeat mm. and then you get into the next game, you know, low in confidence. Because I think the second game is going to be crucial. I think if we can don't get beaten that, take a point out with that, you go into the hungry game and you think that's just a shootout, four points gets you through. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's all sorts of speculation on uh, what we need to do. Some have suggested that we might actually get out of the group on three points. Um, straight to the point, though, we've been to the Allianz Arena earlier today, had a look at it. It is a magnificent stadium, but over and above that, Hugh, you are an aficionado on all things German. You know the quality of the stadium uh, up and down the country, all of the uh, stadiums that have been picked for this tournament are first class. Uh, and five of them, half the tournaments are second division tournaments, uh, second division stadium. Mm. I mean, that's how, I mean, I always say if you were going to have the Euros in one country in perpetuity, the way you have obviously uh, the All England Championships are at Wimbledon every year, you'd have it in Germany. I mean, it's just the, the, the infrastructure, the culture. The, the stadiums, I think fans are going to be transport, transport to yeah. the stadiums. I think fans are going to be absolutely blown away with things like Stuttgart, which would be normally people would say, well, what that'll be one of the lesser ones. It's terrific. But the Allianz is really top range, and what I love about the Allianz and the Germans love about are loving about Scotland coming tomorrow night is that they feel that Bayern fans don't 
create the atmosphere that the Allianz really deserves and they will find out tomorrow what a set of really rabid fans can do <laughs> in a stadium because that place will be going crazy tomorrow at kickoff, and that's why we're all that's why we're all looking forward to it. I mean, that's why everybody's just like on edge for that big kickoff because, as you say, Peter, Germany should win this. We we know that it's the first game against a home nation. But it's just that we thing in the yeah. back of your mind. Can we cause an upset tomorrow night? Yeah, I don't know if it's in the back of your mind. It's not in my mind at all. Um, <laughs> uh, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I'm just absolutely <laughs> delighted because I think we've got a good manager. I like him. I like the squad we've got. Um, if anything, if I'm going to be absolutely realistic in that, this has been the theme of PLZ Soccer throughout last season as well, Tam, the domestic season that's finished. We're not going to sugarcoat it. We w we're delighted we're here. We've got a good manager, but we can't score goals. And we always give one away. Yeah, and that seems seems to have crept in. I mean, the first five games of the group we yeah, won no. comfortably and we were flying. I think after that, you know, we'd already qualified, losing to Spain away from home, that controversial mm. goal that got disallowed. Mm. I think from then on, we've, we have leaked a few goals, Peter. Um, even our night against Finland, I know mm. it's a friendly. Or two nothing up, we're cruising, we could be three or four. Mm. Every every ball they put in the box, I was thinking, they could score here, that's yeah. Finland. You know, they've not got the same quality as Germany, so... We're going to play three at the back. That's you know I think that's pretty certain. We're going to play five across the midfield. We've got to defend crosses. We've got to defend cross balls better. Our goalkeeper's got to come out and command the box um, because I think the Germans. In fact, I know the Germans will be big. You know, there's never been a small German team, so they'll come out. They'll be big, and they'll be powerful. And we've got to match that. Another end, we've got to take our chance. I think we'll create chances. I don't think the Germans are particularly bulletproof and solid at the back. You know, I think they concede goals. They play a high line. They've still got the sweeper keeper, who I think. Sure, you might correct me on this. I think he's past his best. I Manuel think he's Miller. past his best as um, well. Yeah. He seems to be he, the, the goal um, against Real Madrid in the Champions League. I thought mm -hmm. he was poor at. So I think we've got a goal in us, Peter. Um, but we might need to score two um, because, as you said, we're, we're, we don't look particularly solid as a unit at the minute. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you just if you looked at Scotland, you thought to yourself, OK, where's the strengths? right across that middle um, where they look good on the ball Hugh they can they can play that European style of football because they've got players who are comfortable technically um, I think where the Tartan Army will get slightly worried uh, across the beer kellers for those who don't have tickets is quite simply when you're looking you're saying to yourself Germans set pieces I think we're in trouble and then over and above that we've got to be realistic it's 90,000 in a stadium at a home match that you've pointed out and a German side that, you know, Netherlands and France, suddenly there was a wee bit of a lift yeah. in the conference and then suddenly a couple of friendlies and I'm hearing from German fans, they're not quite sure whether they're the real deal or not at the moment. Yeah, we'll soon find out because that's the, that's the I mean, the crucial test is, is playing at home in a home tournament and if you're Germany, they're expecting you to win the tournament. This is not, you know, let's, you know, let's get a nice semi-final. German fans will be saying to them, you've got to win this. I think it's an unusual German team and because uh, Nagelsmann's been really quite radical in the team. He's got rid of players that were, uh, and I mean just got rid of players, that uh, were central to Germany, particularly in midfield over the years. And I'm thinking really about uh, Kimmich and Goretzka. And he's decided to go, he's not the only, he's got a real... Uh, number nine, traditional number nine in Fulkrug, but he'll probably be on the bench. I, I don't expect Fulkrug to start tomorrow, so I think the Eagles will play with Javiers as a as a sort of false nine, and I think what you'll see from Germany tomorrow is a lot more cuter play rather than the power play that Goretzka and, and, and Kimmich will bring. You're going to have smaller players like, uh, and I mean smaller in stature, not in, in talent, uh, like Wirtz and Javiers but the big, the big thing as well is having Cruz in that team. Yeah, uh, he's also brought in back in uh, Emery Chan. Uh, well, Chan came in, yeah, because of injuries. I thought Ch Chan had a, a really up and down season. I thought he did well in the Champions League final. Yeah, period. so did I. I yeah. thought he did well in that. Absolutely. Um, you know, I watched Borussia Dortmund in that Champions League final first half. You know, if they'd taken their chances, this is a different kettle of fish um, because quite simply Steve Clark I mean I wonder what he has to say what is the what is the team talk for that opening 20 minutes Tom that's the that's the key to this because the Germans if, if we lost a goal suddenly we'd have that feeling of oh no this could be an absolute doing but Steve Clark has the side organised but there's just 
it's just we've got to face up to the quality. We are, you know, what have we got? 5.4 million against a, a country with a population of about 83.4 million. Yeah, listen, I think it, keeping possession is crucial, Peter. I think you can quieten the crowd. I think in any game, you, you go away from home uh, with a big crowd against you. If you can keep the ball and, and just, you know, silence the crowd, take the crowd out of the game. Uh, the jet, listen, there'll, there'll probably be as many Scotland fans as there will be I German fans. And more. I, I don't mm-hmm. think it's going to be a partisan German crowd. I mean, Scotland fans will find themselves in that stadium. Absolutely. Think, How did they get there? So, I think that keeping the ball that's why I think you've got a big decision to make for me Stevie and that is the middle of the park mm-hmm. does he play Billy Gilmer um, I think McTominay and McGinn are two stick-ons mm-hmm. they'll play does he play Gilmer or Callum McGregor um, personally I think I think Billy Gilmore is a better player but I think Callum's experience might get him the nod I think Billy's been excellent when he's played for Scotland and I think he, he, he'll go and he's got the confidence to go and take the ball I think that's that's the only big decision he's got for me is, is in that middle of the park I think he'll play Christie behind Chi uh, Adams. Adams, I think he's wrapped Chi Adams and Cotton right. Asti. He's only recognised nine at the minute. And the no, not team. Lauren Shankland. I don't no. think he'll start Shankland. I think you need a threat in behind Peter because yeah. I think the Germans, if you play Shankland, will sit in the halfway line because mm. he's not going to run away for you. I think at least Chi Adams gives them a threat of in behind and they can't push right up the part. So that's the only one for me, Peter, is, is McGregor or Gilman in the middle of the part. That's yeah. the only key I, one for me. And I, I think, though, if you're talking about what Clark has to say, Peter, I think he just says, like, Spain. He just says, listen, mm-hmm. look what we did to Spain. Yeah. And we didn't fluke it against Spain. We rattled them. We, 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 we showed that not only were we were a good, vigorous team full of energy, but we had quality as well. The goals were, 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 were real quality goals in that night. Mm-hmm. And I think he says, listen, we beat Spain. We can do it today. We can go and do it again. It's a huge task. Don't get me wrong. But I think he's had his team in his mind for, for quite a while. I think he'll know what he's doing tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, if you were looking for a catchphrase, though, Hugh, that sums up the the constant message that every player, it's almost as if they've been, it's almost as if this Scotland squad has had a PR agency in from Satchi and Satchi and said, OK, come up with a catchphrase, and it is, we want to make history. Uh-huh. We just want to get out of the group uh-huh. and, and reach that legendary status of saying, well, we're the first international side representing Scotland uh, in the men's game mm. to do it and it would be absolutely sensational and by the way every one of them is following that line yeah and it's quite right to do so I mean and, and remember there's only eight teams that are going to go out at the group stage yeah. two thirds of the teams are going through it's a right, right good chance to make history isn't uh, it I mean if you're uh, <laughs> So and, and as I say, I think you know. Uh, I, I think if you have three points with a maybe a, 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 a stable uh, a goal difference of mm. zero, you know, set of zero, I think it gives you a chance. And I think, I mean, I would hope for a really good performance tomorrow. Anything out of that game, great. But I'm more and more I'm focusing on the Switzerland game for some. I've got a feeling about Switzerland. I've been reading up about them. Yakking the managers under a bit of pressure. He's brought in a new assistant. A lot of the players in that team, the top class players, Shakiri, Zaka, etc., are getting on. Uh, there's been a rumbles of, and I just wonder if you get them uh, in, in the second game and beat them. Some of the whole momentum tilts quite dramatically. Worse of all, well, I, I, I mean, I, I know I, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I, I would be showing them the video with the Euro '96. Switzerland with Alan McCoist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, the goal against Switzerland and just that shows you it's possible. You know, and obviously beat them one nothing. I agree. Switzerland Switzerland hungry. Mm. You know, they're, they're, they're good size, Peter, but I think we've you know player for player, particularly in the middle of the park, we're, we're better. We're just we can match up to them. As long as we don't get a hammering in the Allianz that, uh, tomorrow, the, the I, I'd be it's happy because I don't want the, the Scotland squad to be flat after it. Um interestingly enough, this is what Andy Robertson had to say in uh, today's uh, press conferences. It's no secret, Germany will um, probably dominate possession. They've got the best midfielder in the world in Tony Cruz. Mm-hmm. Interesting point. Um, but then uh, when we have the ball, we've got to capitalise on it. And we have to be composed um, when we are on the ball. Um, and then, of course, frustrate them as much as we can. If we do that, hopefully, it's enough to get a result. We know they'll have a game plan as well. It's about who shows up on the night. Well, you know, you could almost pick non-stop exactly what the, the, the words coming out of any camp is going to mm. be. The Germans are just going to say, we'll show Scotland all the respect in the world. Oh, but, you know, f- for every German who's there, Tony Cruz include, included in that squad. I mean, I watched him 
just strutting stuff, waving to the Real Madrid fans as he bagged, I think it was his fifth Champions <clears throat> League winner's medal. We've got a good Scotland midfield. But we're talking levels, Hugh, my God. But you're talking, I mean, we've got a Champions League midfield, no doubt about it. I mean, I think, you know, obviously all the players, I think they, they would be of a Champions League level. But if you're talking about players like Cruz and Inverts as well, see if they, I mean, I don't know how many, uh, I mean, Wurz has had one of these seasons in Germany, which has been spectacular. Leverkusen. Or Leverkusen. They've, they've won the Everton except the Horse of the Year show. I mean, they've just... <laughs> and, and, and it was only... I mean, Gasparini did the business mm. in Alonso in the final. He really did. Yeah. A really kind of gambling, high-press, man-to-man game, and he, and he got the better of that. But that's the only time that, that, that you could see Leverkusen have faltered in any way this season. They've been absolutely impeccable. And, and Wurz has been central to that. Uh, and by the way, as well, he's settled. He's not coming into a tournament wondering if he's going to Bayern or Real. And that. He said, I'm staying at Leverkusen, so he's got none of the agent noise around him. Cruz is settled. He knows it's, this is domino for him. Uh, have Havertz has settled. Uh, you know, there's not the internal strife that there sometimes can be in the in the German camp. So it's all about ominous and that. Yeah, I'll tell you the good thing, and this is the positive aspect of it. We're out here, PLZ mm -hmm. Soccer, the team's with us, the backroom team, and AJ Kerry's out reporting. You're here wearing your usual mile out gear, uh, and of course Hugh is adding that. Uh, He's just waiting for the postal look. Just oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. He doesn't want to actually. He I'm doesn't want to diss the place he was brought up in. I'm only here to Tuesday because that's my pension day, so <laughs> yeah. I've got to go back for that. But I'll be back <laughs> Wednesday. Don't worry. Don't worry. There's a few who'll be heading back as well. Um, somebody actually, you know, he'd get tickets for the Germany game, and then somebody said to him, but, but if we're if we're, if we're in with a positive, you know, scoreline, will we, you know, mm. will you come back out again? I don't think I could be bothered flying in and out, in no, and out, no. in and out. You know, you're, you're there for the 10 days and then hopefully more. Who knows uh, what's going to happen with regards to that. But what do you think about it all? Give us your thoughts on how you think Germany are going to fare against Scotland. How c can Scotland produce the, the draw, the win? Mm. Um, if you're a Tartan Army fan, do you really think Scotland could produce a real upset? And it certainly would be to absolutely catch out this country, I can tell you, um, if Scotland were to win in the opening game of the European Championships in front of 90,000. It would send shockwaves right across the, the whole of the I, would, I think it'll be narrower than people think, but mm -hmm. unfortunately I think it'll be, you know, we're talking about the first uh, tournament in a generation, and I think it'll be like the first game, of the, I think Scotland will narrowly lose. Uh, I'm, I'm, do you know like what, Hugh, I'm glad we've got them in the first game. Uh. I'm glad because I, I look back in history, Cameroon against Argentina, uh. when can he generally get the, 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 <laughs> yeah, the three Cameroon yeah, defenders, is it one nil to Cameroon? Uh. Senegal, I think, beat France uh, uh, in an opening game. We ran Brazil close. No. I, I, I always think that there's never blowouts, there's never four no. and fives in a, in, a, no. in a home nation. I think they grow into the tournament. Uh -huh. uh, England, you know, 96 as well. So I think I, I don't think it's a bad time to get the Germans, Peter. Yeah. I hope I'm not. Okay. Uh, uh, Tam has just mentioned that. And while he said that, I'm going to have a drink of beer <laughs> because. Tom, I wish I, I wish I shared your optimism on it. Um, as far as, I, I must mention just uh, uh, one uh, guy that we met this morning because it's such an early set off for so many uh, of the Tartan army and so many crews, broadcasters, mm. written press, everybody wants a piece of it. A big hi to Brandon, who is a young man who was setting off uh, today in his Scotland top with his mum. They were going to mm. go to the game and it was absolutely fabulous. And uh, uh, you know, he's just, I think he's just passed his exams, so it's only a matter of time before he eventually pushes me right out of this seat here and takes over. But nevertheless, great to see mums, dads, families, mm. people with their kids. Uh, uh, you know what I love about it all? Mm. There's so many great stories, but everybody wants to share the memories, regardless of what happens. Well, that's what, I mean, it's got that, uh, because it's, it's once in a lifetime for people. You know, this is the first big one of the 21st century for us. Mm. You, it just is because of, because of COVID. And uh, I just think that people are buying into this. I mean, the amount of people are over here who will not have a, a chance of a ticket mm. yeah. is extraordinary as well. And uh, I think the atmosphere and throughout the city tomorrow, building up to the game, I'm going to go on the, the walk 
to the game. I'm going to go with the fans, walk up there tomorrow, Peter, just to... It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing to save them. Yeah. So I've got my mobility scooter. <laughs> <laughs> if it's just, I've got a wee Kerry. Kerry will come I'll be alongside me with the scooter. So if it just, if I fall on me, but she just says, right, there's a scooter. But I mean, because I think in, in this situation, Germany is just a terrific place to come and watch football. You're talking about great stadiums, great fans, and, and the Scotland fans. And what a game. Scotland v Germany. The eyes of the world are on you. Aye. Not just Europe, the eyes of the, the world. world. You know, the, the, the global. You know, reach of this game, Peter. We've been watching it all over the world. I've got yeah. friends in Canada and America all tuning in at you know young time in the morning. You know, it's 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 a huge game for the players as well to be part of the. I think ceremony. the players will be really up for it because see a lot of the things about the Scotland team as well, Peter. You can see, I think there's four or five players that are real Champions League players. Yeah. A lot of players are decent. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of grit and determination about this team, and I think there's a there's a. I think they're embracing the fact that they can make history. I don't think they'll shrink from it because seeing big games, the games matter. People go on about Gibraltar, Finland and all, and we do because that's our business. But seeing the games in the qualifying campaign that really mattered, you know, Norway away, Spain at home, did the business. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I would absolutely love you take a, a late Kenny McLean curler, uh, you know, into the bottom corner to snatch a draw. You know, I, I win, I just think we're in planet cuckoo land to think about beating the Germans in their own backyard. Um, but I'd love it to happen. If it did happen, let me tell you, we'd be... I think, <laughs> Tam, I, I kid you not, if we beat Germany tomorrow night, you and I are going to be lying in a pool in the middle of Munich um, and... Uh, I'll have a kebab hanging out the side of my mouth. This is, do they do? Do they do good kebabs in I Munich? I think they do. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Um, asking Hugh if he can get his. You rely with a few thousand others. Yeah, right. absolutely. But absolutely magnificent. The one great thing, and I hope I'm not tempting fate here, but the one great thing about witnessing the Tartan Army uh, here today, travelling over uh. in their thousands, is quite simply. They're here to have fun. Mm. There is no negativity mm. around the Scotland fans coming here. They just want to come, have a drink, support their team. Whether they're inside the stadium or outside the stadium, they want to savour it and say we're here. And when they're wearing their kilts, some of them are wearing the CU Jimmy hats, which does my head in. Um, but nevertheless, <laughs> they're still wanting to have a laugh and, and you know forget about it. Just enjoy it. I could be doing a see you Jimmy hat <laughs> the way the sun's just catching the old nap on there. Yeah, I mean the whole thing I mean the the great thing about Germany as well is 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 the fact that it is a football culture. You're coming to a place that revels in football. You're coming to a place where the football fan isn't held in contempt. The football fans honoured in Germany. They've got a voice, they've got a place in culture. You'll see it tomorrow, you'll see it all through the tournament, you'll see the, the the, the three great kind of set pieces of German football, the people gathering in squares. Then you'll see them going out to the stadium, the way they can go out to the stadium, because transport links are great, but also this fact that you know they love walking to stadiums. And you'll see it in the stadium as well. These are top-class stadiums. They're not antiseptic in any way. They're modern, they're comfortable. But they were built by football people, mm. for football people. I mean, I think people are going to have a... If they haven't sampled it before, they're in for a real treat in Germany. Yeah, it's the start of a tremendous tournament. Give us your thoughts on how you think Scotland are going to fare against Germany. We'd love your comments in the section below on our YouTube channel, across our social media channels as well. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and, of course, like, follow and share across Facebook because Tam, uh, Hugh and myself and Kerry will be out there reporting as well, getting the thoughts of the Tartan Army. And let's not forget also uh, that Patrick and Blair and Cheryl and of course Alison McConnell will be back home uh, in Scotland just monitoring the people who couldn't quite make it out to Germany but will be filling up the bars, going into George Square, going around all the venues, not only in the uh, west of Scotland but in the east of Scotland. <coughs> We're covering all the fan reaction to the game, the build up to it as well. You'll catch that right across our social media and don't forget to give us your thoughts as well because we want to know what you think. Are you overly optimistic? Um, do you think there is a shock on the cards in match day one, uh, as Tam has alluded to, or is there just that sense of, <laughs> of, of cynicism of the older two mm. in the camp who think maybe you'll be lucky if we get a draw, um, but maybe be lucky to get a goal. Um, but nevertheless, 
Um, give us your thoughts on it. The predictions. Well, I mean, that's the thing about it. What do you want to do? The do you want to have? Do you want to Do you want to have a? Do you want to have a, a program where basically Negative just Normans. Well, I was going to say to you, what do you want? You want Walt Disney or do you want PLZ? <laughs> as simple as that. Thank you. Am I being a killjoy here? No, we're being realistic. Um, I, I, by the way, it's all right sitting here now and being realistic. But I know it's even at 69 years of age. When I'm marching out to that ground tomorrow, I'll be thinking, "Oh, we could maybe nick a draw here." Yeah. I know, I, you know, I, and I, but I think that that is what being a football fan is all about. Yeah. If we if we lived in a life of, I mean, as pundits, we've got to sit here and, and, and give it the way we think. Yeah. But I think tomorrow the football fan will kick into me uh, just before kick-off and I'll live in hope. We're going to wear a Scotland top, aren't we, Hugh? Oh, aye. Uh, do you know what I love about it? It's, it's I'm going to wear a pair of shorts as well. Uh, uh, that oh. will be the first time I've seen you in shorts, <laughs> by the way. PG or uh, 12 or 15 on the bottom of the screen if you get shorts. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, I would go as far as to say a small red triangle is a warning <laughs> to everybody, but nevertheless, if you, if you, I cannot wait to see him wear shorts. Uh, we'll have the Scotland tops <coughs> on because why not? Patriotic about it all. We want Scotland to do well. Uh, we certainly want you to follow PLZ Soccer right across the whole tournament. And just on that, before we finish, <coughs> got to get your you on, on the World Tournament. I can't, just before we get our predictions, um, we'll give our predictions today. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we'll analyse more of it, Steve Clark. Yeah. I don't think there are any major injuries. The only the only one is the big blow is Lyndon Dykes. Aye. You know, Andy Robertson says he feels fine. Lyndon Dykes is not... Um, He's, he's out of the squad, but he's there as a fan. Uh -huh. So that shows you the support and the camaraderie mm. in that team. Um, but uh, uh, we'll get the prediction of that. Overall, I can't see past France to win the entire tournament. I, France would be my favourites. I think I've got a wee feeling for Portugal as well. I think I think Portugal has got a real depth of squad. Uh, and my wee outsiders would be Austria, because Ranić's there and he's had them for a while. And I'm not expecting them to win the tournament. I wouldn't be surprised if Austria did better than people thought. Tom? I think I fancy Portugal, Peter. I think that 7 8 to 1. I think they're a tournament team. They're a very experienced team. I watched Ronaldo the other night against uh, Ireland. Still oh, sharp as attack. See that finish as well? Great finish. He still, I mean, you think you go to Saudi, he's, he's 40, 40 odd year old. You're thinking you would just go over there and he still looks, he looks as if he's 21. He's still hungry and. He's still a key player for Portugal. Yep, you know, they've, got Pepe, so they've, got, you know, they've got guys at the back. So Portugal you, for me, eight to one, Pierre. You go for Portugal to win it. I think mm. Portugal can win it. Eh? Okay, uh, France. You France? I'm France, but I agree with Tam. I, I think Portugal's got Portugal a really good depth of squad. And if you look at Portugal before, Portugal won it because we all thought Ronaldo gets them over the line. They've got an awful lot more mm. in their locker now. Mm. Yeah. Listen, um, we talked about the fact that we'll be covering. Uh, not only what's happening in Germany inside the stadium tomorrow, but we'll also be covering what's happening outside. Mm. Features with the fans, having a bit of fun with the Tartan Army because that's what it's all about here in Germany. And back home as well, I did mention to you that we've got a team out there working uh, you know, furiously, uh, getting the thoughts of the Tartan Army before they've had a few beers. I spotted two guys at uh, about half seven this morning with two laggers in front of them and I thought, wow, that takes some Five o'clock somewhere, Peter. Yeah, I know it's five o'clock somewhere, but, but not where they <laughs> <laughs> we were starting, I have to tell you. Um, our man Patrick Mullen has been out and about in Glasgow getting the thoughts of the Scotland fans. Yeah, that's right, Peter. 200,000 Scotland fans may be joining you over there in Germany, but here in Scotland, millions more will be watching here from home. So we've been out in Glasgow today to hear the thoughts of a few of the fans. Heading over to, heading over to Germany, when did that get booked and why are you, why are you heading there? Uh, I've never, never experienced Scotland before in my life as in, in a European competition or a world competition so booked a couple of months ago he was coming then he wasn't coming then I brought my friend Christopher along now he is coming so the three of us are all going along so I would like to it Euros kicks off tomorrow how are you doing yeah. ahead of it? Oh, amazing we're, we're going to win the tournament I've got the hope spot's going to carry us through I'm excited um, but there's always like, an element of just wondering what's going to happen this time I mean I was at the opening match in the World Cup 1998 with Scotland played Brazil. And again, we had huge expectations and we almost did it, but not quite. So I just hope this time, actually, we deserve, we deserve that to have the breaks. And uh, hopefully this time we can actually get past the qualifying rounds and, uh, and then proceed to pull the wings. How far do you think Scotland could go in this tournament? 
We're going to the group stage, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. We're going to the group stages and we'll see if you're there. But we'll be back on, uh, we'll be back on for the inside. We'll do all right. Aye, we'll be all right. Do you have fan zones in the city? Have you got fans away watching it? Uh, of course not. I'm at work tomorrow, but uh, uh, it's also my birthday, so I'm hoping we can give us a good birthday present. Uh, but it'll be down below the pub. Uh, Cheer them on. Just don't get you know, a good school prediction for your birthday. Uh, hopefully, like a 2 0 would be, would be amazing. How far can Scotland go in this year? Oh, the final. I don't know, I'd love that to be the case. You just never know. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow night, Germany. I think it'll be a score draw. Right, before you go, <laughs> score prediction for tomorrow night. 1-1. Uh, 1-1. One, one. One, one. Uh, one, no, Scotland. 1-1 one, one for me, 1-1 one, one for me as well. One each. Well done to Patrick. I mean, in the rain, in the rain, no, no less. And he can uh, talk about it. Doesn't it matter if it's 100 degrees or yeah. minus 10. He just talks for fun. Well, the yeah. only problem with Patrick, the rain's good for Patrick, though, because there is not enough factor 50 in the world if he was out <laughs> here. Oh, if he was out here, he'd be gone. You just, just have to put him through a car wash with it. <laughs> yeah. I listened great work there by Patrick, getting the thoughts of uh, some of the members of the Tartan Army at home here thousands upon thousands uh, and don't forget you can win the Seville calculator that Hugh has in his pocket <laughs> which basically says that the whole of Scotland is decamped to Munich um, but nevertheless I think by the time we get closer to that stadium uh, we will start to see the Tartan army descend on a beautiful stadium and the noise will be unbelievable I just hope we give a good account of ourselves um, I'll tell you right now the closest I've been to having that great feeling um, and I go back through some brilliant moments. One of them um, was, of course, Joe Jordan in 1973 Oof. scoring for Scotland against Czechoslovakia. We're all of a certain vintage, mm. Tam. As a kid, I, I couldn't believe it. It made me feel so great to, to be Scottish. Um, but the other one was the last time, actually, we were doing a live game. Mm. Ruffy and myself were there with uh, Kenny Miller and Chris Commons, of all people. And uh, this is before we got two really good pundits. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, up stepped Lee Griffiths, popped two into the back of the net from the free kick. Gordon Strachan was jumping up and down in the sidelines and we thought, oh, you know, dream on until suddenly Harry Kane popped up and no. done his in. Whatever happened to Harry Kane? Yeah, he just kind of just went into One obscurity. Season I'll tell you about that. Whatever happened to Gordon Strachan? Mm. Our reporter, Blair Malloy, caught up with him today. Gordon Strachan has said that Scotland must be brave tomorrow in their Euro 2024 opener against Germany, but he has revealed in which aspect of the game Scotland can more than compete against the hosts. Gilmore, McGregor, uh, McGinn, McChomb, they can all handle the ball. So it's important that they don't dismiss the ball when they first get it, then they can actually go and do what you say, go and have a go at Germany. If, if, if you can get in transition, where you nick it and go quickly, that's fine, but I don't think we've got the pace to go and do that. Um, but we've got, we've got other assets that we can score goals. We can build up through through teams because we've got good players. We've got set plays. Um, so getting set plays, I think we're more than equal with them at set plays. That's where it becomes you know, it's a great opportunity to score a goal. One of the major questions facing Steve Clark is who will start up front tomorrow in the Allianz. Will it be Lauren Shankland of Hearts or Shea Adams to lead the line? And the former Scotland manager has given us an insight into what will be going through Steve Clark's head in the leading up to the game. Yeah, I think for the last maybe four nights, I think Steve will be lying in his bed thinking everything else is going great. I've got that's the thing I've got to pick. Who's playing up front, and it, and it can. It can take up your mindset as a man as it can fill 80% of your day because he's probably knows who everybody else is, but picking that one. But I don't think it's, it's such a big choice. I think both can do a good job in, in, in slightly different ways. Can Scotland get off to the dream start and upset host Germany in the Allianz tomorrow? Euro fever is certainly building here. Back to you in Germany. It is one of those managers that I really wish he had succeeded. I've never met a man who was so proud to be Scottish and wanted so much to deliver, uh, you know, what the, the Scotland fans craved, qualifying for a major tournament at that point. Uh, sliding doors moments, Hugh, can determine your, you, your future and Gordon was just denied it cruelly. Um, and I think he looks back with pain over mm. games like Georgia. But G Georgia is the one that just... It just killed the us, and it was just such. A, it was just a, such an awful performance. Not a shot in target. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know what. Ha I mean, it, it would have been a Sears inquiry if it was a horse race. It was so poor that night. 
and but these every now and again that kind of performance can come up and, and there's no there's no gain seeing it and, and and it's a pity because I watched some really good performances under Gunstein. I, yeah. I remember going to Poland, a really strong Poland Polish team, Peter, and we should have beat them. Yeah, and we were unlucky that night as well. So. It's all the, that great cliche, isn't it? There's no fine margins, there's not much in it. And I think in this qualification campaign, when push came, the math one thing, and I'll go back to my optimism, when push came to shove in this qualification uh, campaign, Steve Clark got it right, and his players got it right, and I just hope over that, that is that is a template for the next three games. Well, while I was a big fan of Gordon Strachan, and I, I genuinely uh, wanted him to do well, I'm also a big fan of Steve Clark. Mm. I think he's a he's a man that I've got a lot of time for. He's got a no nonsense approach. Players certainly are happy that he doesn't overcomplicate things and the message that he gets across and how he wants them to play, where he wants them to play in this organised setup that he has. Um, and he's also one of those managers that has a quality which I feel, you know, players respond to, which is loyalty. He's loyal mm. to the players that have that have stood by him in the trenches. Uh, and that's why I really want him to do well, Tam. And a lot of people might say, oh, wait a minute, Peter, you've, been, you've got your negative head on with Germany. I haven't. I've got my realistic head on. But I'm certainly optimistic about the next two games after that, providing we don't have an earth-shattering hammering. I, I think Steve Clark could do this. I really do. Yeah, listen, I, th I think the key, the key thing for us now, Peter, is we've got the players. I think we've got mm. the players now. Um, we didn't always have the players in the past. And it was difficult for managers. I think with Steve, he showed it Kamarnock. You know, Kamarnock were nowhere near third place when he mm. went in there. He went in there and transformed that club and left them and went to Scotland. And they've never been near third place again since. Mm. So apart from probably this year with Derek McInnes. So I, I think he's a top, top manager. I think the German game looks after itself. I don't mm. think there's a lot he needs to say, to be honest. I think the boys are pumped up for mm. it. Simplify things for players, you know, set pieces, stuff like that. Mm. Don't fill players' heads with lots of stuff, ground the pitch, you know, one or two things, right, you need to do that, you need to do this, fine. I think that game takes care of itself, but the, the, the bigger tests will be, will be Switzerland and Hungary, when, when the, the pendulum will switch a little bit, where we'll be expected to get something, you know, we'll be expected to get something out of office Switzerland, and in the last game, maybe if Hungary get, lose the first two games, you should beat Hungary. So that's when the pressure flips a wee bit, Peter. Um, I don't think there's much pressure on us tomorrow night, there is from within the Scotland camp. They want to do do well and get a result, but I don't think many people outside it expects us to get a result. But the other two games, I think, is the ones where he's maybe got to come out and attack a little bit more than that. It's when we could leave ourselves a little bit open. But that's 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 football. That's the chances you take. You can't just sit in every game. You know, you got to go and go and be proactive in games. And I think the, the other two games, you will have to do that. Well, we have to do it with the good players that we know we have on our side, um, and let's hope that some of the players that maybe are the weakness that the Germans will try and exploit have the game of their lives. Give us your prediction, Tam. My, my head's saying 3-0 th to Germany and my heart's saying one each. And I'm going to go with my heart, one each. OK. Um, my, uh, my heart is saying, uh, you know, 2-1 Scotland. We are absolutely bladdered, lying uh, in the middle of Munich, asking someone to take us home to a hotel that we don't know. Uh, we've lost our phones. <laughs> 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 That's what I'd love to happen. Exactly. But my head is telling me three one Germany. The Scots get a chance to celebrate a goal in the Allianz Arena. Oh. But they're not gonna do it, Hugh. My heart says it's time to get my cholesterol checked. <laughs> and my head says two one Germany. Yeah. Okay, give us your thoughts on it. What do you think? Germany against Scotland, the opening game of Euro twenty twenty four in the Allianz Arena. 8 o'clock kick-off here, um, I think back home 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock here sure, in Germany. No. Um, but nevertheless, when they walk out there, the Tartan army are going to go absolutely ballistic. Mm. So are we. We're going to enjoy it. We're certainly going to bring you all the preview from tomorrow in the big build-up. We might even change our predictions by tomorrow. Will you stick to your prediction? And then over and above that, we'll have all the stories of the Tartan Army, how they managed to get here, how many people are skint, how many people don't know how they're getting home, um, and what about the people who are going into that stadium with high hopes of a miracle, of something special for Scotland to talk about 
for years to come. We certainly hope Steve Clark can do it with the boys. It's a come on Scotland. It's one of those charges. We haven't got our faces painted, mm. Hugh, but we'll certainly have our Scotland tops Tom, on tomorrow. That's not Tom's real face, is it? <coughs> no, that's him that's now. That color. Uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to say to you, give us your thoughts on it all. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to like, share and follow across all of our social media. Tam's going to go and get changed. We're going to go and have a meal, have a few more beers. Uh, and Hugh is going to watch us have a few more beers. <laughs> uh, we'll have a wee bit of food and go to your bed. Yeah, because you've got to be... You've I've got, got to bingo first. And don't, forget, <laughs> and don't forget also that uh, Kerry Pollock will be out and about getting interviews here in Munich and Patrick Blair and Cheryl and Alison will be doing the business back home in Scotland on the west coast uh, certainly for one of the big uh, fan zones and on the east coast as well coming up so for the next 10 days keep it to PLZ Soccer join us join the football family because wherever you are we are for the Euro 2024 tournament come on Scotland join us tomorrow if you can come on <laughs>